Hi everyone, this is Sydney, your college and career advisor, and today I'm going to talk to you about the do's and don'ts of college applications. So first things first, we have to know when is the best time to apply to college. So between now and Halloween is the best time to complete college applications, though I would encourage you to look at the individual college that you plan on applying to to see what their actual um, application deadlines are. Um, generally, we say between now and Halloween is the best time just because it gives you enough time to finish the application, then do your FAFSA, then work on scholarships. And if something comes up, like you get pulled for verification, which uh, colleges do at random, you'll have enough time between the application window and the decision deadline in May to make those decisions and make any changes you need to. Um, I encourage you guys to also apply to at least three schools, your safe match and reach school. So if you watched my action plan video, I explained that a safe school is a school where your GPA is always going to be a match. It's not financially taxing for you or your family. Um, it has open enrollment. So Basically, a college like Jackson College is a really good safe school because you can you can apply there at any point and they don't have a minimum GPA requirement. A match school is a school where your GPA fits their GPA requirements. Uh, same with test scores. It's not financially taxing for your family. They have the program that you want, the campus size that you want. Um, everything just kind of is a fit. And a REACH school is a school that's like your U of M's and your Harvard's where the program might be the best program in the country and it might be a little bit out of your range in terms of GPA, but you still want to try for it. And I think you should. So make sure you check the websites of the colleges you are applying for to see their specific deadlines, like I said before. Um, and when we talk about deadlines, we're talk I'm talking about early action, rolling admissions, um, and open enrollment. So early action is the earliest deadline. Typically those deadlines are sometime in November in De or December. And when you, when you apply as an early action, you're the one who's gonna get the answer back from the college first. But if you do get accepted early action, that's the college that you're going to. So it's not like with ruling admission where you get to weigh your options between other colleges and then like maybe make a choice. The choice, early action is you've made the choice, this is the college that you want and you're applying. Um, some schools offer additional scholarships for early action, but you have to be really sure that that's the college you want to attend. For rolling admission, um, there is a larger application window, so it'll be between like now and Feb January or February. Um, and students will be um, told about their acceptance um, a little bit after that, sometime in like March, March through May. And it just gives students more time to apply, write your essays. Um, generally, I advise students to just do the rolling admission um, so, because it gives you the opportunity to apply to other schools and kind of assess where you're going to go based on financial aid and stuff like that. Open enrollment has no admissions deadline and no GPA requirements like I mentioned earlier. Again, I go back to Jackson College. You can apply to Jackson College right up until classes start and even after classes start. So there is um, absolutely no admissions window. So what do you need to apply? So you're gonna need to know your social security number and make sure you have the right one because if you don't, there's a whole verification process that you have to go through and it has happened before many times. So make sure you have your social security number Make sure you have your, a personal email address, like a Gmail or a Yahoo address or an iCloud. Do not use your school email address for the FAFSA, for scholarships, for college applications, because once you graduate, those email addresses will be turned off and anything that you had registered to those email addresses will kind of be lost. So if you need to reset your password on anything, 
you're not going to be able to access the recovery email that they would send to you. A brag sheet. So what a brag sheet is, is it's just a document where you keep all of your extracurriculars, volunteer opportunities, um, leadership positions that you've held, um, current and past jobs and awards. So when you are doing college applications and scholarships and it asks you for that information, you can just pull from that sheet instead of constantly trying to remember what things you were involved in high school and possibly leaving some important stuff out. Be prepared to write an essay. So the essays for college applications are generally pretty standard. Some colleges might ask you some different questions, but generally it's you'll have you'll be able to use the same essay with minimal tweaking for each college that um, asks you to provide an essay because some colleges do not. Um, and also application fee waivers. So you can fill out what's called a NACAC fee waiver which is the National College Access Network, um, where they, you fill out this form and it gets sent to your college and the college will waive the fee that goes with applications. And some of those application fees can be as high as $75. So if you are a student who qualifies for free and reduced lunch, you qualify for a NACAC fee waiver and you can get that possibly get that fee waived and not have to pay that $75. Also look on schools websites because some schools might have fee waiver codes that they have for um, you guys. Um, or if you have visited the college before and you have contact information for somebody at the college, you and like in admissions, you can contact them and ask them for a fee waiver code so that you also do not have to pay the application fee because those can add up. If you're applying to three or more colleges that have application fees, it can get quite expensive. All right, so before you apply, here's a couple things that you need to do. Make sure the college you're applying to actually has the program you want. And I know that that sounds pretty obvious, but there have been a lot of times where students have told me about a specific program that they want to study and they've told me a college that they're very very sure they want to attend and when we do some research we find out that that college doesn't even have that program so just double check to make sure that the program that you want to study is actually at the college that you plan on going to go on a virtual tour if there is one because now is the time of covid so a lot of colleges are not able to offer tours so they've done virtual tours. So they might have those on their websites. Check the admissions requirements for the average GPA, average SAT scores, and if the college, because of COVID, has gone test optional or test flexible for the 2021-2022 year. Um, when I say average GPA, it basically is the middle demographics for the current freshman class. And um, that will tell you what the current freshman class is sitting at with high school GPAs and test scores. And that can be really helpful in deciding whether or not it's a match school or a reach school or if you want to apply at all. Check campus demographics. Um, something that we don't really think to do that much, but it is important. Um, basically is a breakdown of, of what the campus looks like in terms of people. So what is the ratio of, of boys to girls? Um, what is, what kinds of racial populations they have there? How diverse the campus is? Um, some of them have different religion breakdowns if that's important to you. And of course, look at the tuition estimates. So you, they usually colleges have tuition calculators on their website. So you can go through the process of, you know, putting in how much your parents make versus how much tuition is and um, what your grades are. And it can kind of give you a rough estimate of how much you might be paying for the year. Or you could just look up how much tuition is with um, 
tuition, room and board, books, and just get an estimate of how much it actually costs to go to school so you know roughly how much you may need to come up with for the year. So a lot of people also ask me where do they find the college applications. So some colleges use the Common App exclusively. So colleges like U of M use, only use the Common App as their college application. If you are applying to a school like U of M that only uses the Common App for a college application, you're going to have to make an account and you can put all the colleges you plan on applying to on that account. If you're not applying to a college that is Common App only, you can just go to the individual college site because it's a little bit less confusing. Um, individual college websites usually just have an apply button. Um, if not, you would just go to their admissions page and the apply button will be somewhere around there. You'll have to make an account and then start an application. It's usually pretty simple. Make sure you hit save when you're doing college applications, by the way, and make sure you write down what your account login stuff is. Otherwise, it's going to make the application process a lot longer. So after you apply, you're going to send transcripts to each school that you apply to, and you're going to do this through parchment.com. You're going to have to make a parchment account, and then you're going to request your transcript to be sent. Um, once you make a parchment account and request that your transcript be sent to all of the schools you applied to or plan on applying to, Mrs. Otto will get a request and send the transcript on your behalf. So I cannot stress this next point enough. Check your email. After you apply, colleges are going to send you a lot of emails about um, the next steps in your admissions journey or a simple submission confirmation, um, codes for uh, listing the college when you're doing the FAFSA. So it's really important that you check your email from these schools and you actually read those emails because they might have specific instructions for you that you need to follow. Um, you might also get emails down the line for verification paperwork. Um, that you need to turn in after you've done the FAFSA. So it's important to be reading those emails from those colleges, even though they will send you a lot. You may also get texts and phone calls and emails from college admissions reps. It's also important to stay in contact with the representatives from colleges because if there is an issue with your financial aid or you're confused about something that is being asked of you, being able to text your admissions rep or have contact with them is really important. Um, and of course, let me know when you have completed a college application by uh, sending me the submission confirmation from application so that I can add your name to the complete to compete drawing. Each student gets up to six college applications and six scholarship applications. And each one you finish, I put your name into a drawing and then we draw for winners and for each phase there's going to be five winners of a $15 gift card and then if you complete each phase of college or career planning you're going to be entered into the grand prize drawing which is somewhere something like a computer or a tv or an xbox or something like that so of course if you guys need any help please feel free to reach out to me. My email is right up here. Um, this is my office number and our hours are Monday through Thursday, 11 to six and Friday and Saturday, 12 to five. So good luck. And of course, let me know if you guys need any help.